Mine says we're live. Does it? Oh, hello, yeah. everyone. <laughs> <laughs> Mine doesn't. Oh, yeah, no, I think we are now, actually. Yeah, we are. I have, do you know what? I haven't actually got anything to say. I've got my phone here. I'll just make sure I'm logged in just in case. I mean, no one's going to come and say hello to us on, on New Year's Eve, I'm sure, but you know. You what? never know. You never I know. I think and everyone has potential, Sam. Yeah, not on New Year's Eve. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So yeah, okay. So we're live. So there's obviously going to be. We can do um. We can do a live next time on whether limiting beliefs are seasonal. <laughs> <laughs> That's actually a good live. <laughs> right. So we are. Yeah. So there's about ten. I reckon about ten fifteen seconds delay, which is usual. So why don't you introduce this time? Because I'm always introducing these lives. Okay. Well, one day I'll figure out how to do it, so it'll actually say that I'm live instead of you as well. So, but yeah. then I'll be completely redundant in this relationship and I'll have nothing to do if I don't do the tech stuff. <laughs> we'll find a new role for you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so this, so this topic today we've been talking about, um, we wanted to do something on the fear of rejection. Mm -hmm. And also I know in the group it's come up that we want to we wanna talk a little bit more about what goes on in those five minute conversations. Because I'm aware I talk about that a lot and don't really give it a second thought and it's like oh I just invite someone into a call and just like have you got five minutes and I don't really think beyond that if I'm totally honest so I'll go into a little bit more detail about what I do in that and Sam you'll probably have an equivalent of what my five minute conversation is as well to share um but yes fear of rejection is a massive one not just for coaches but everybody like and it feels like that's a topic that is there throughout like it, it never kind of it never kind of goes away um and I actually something that you talked about earlier you sent me a message and you were saying um oh this this just feels like kind of scary and I can't remember your exact words but it was that you're in this this feeling of like a lot of doubt or fear and straight away, my mind went to, oh, how can I help? And actually, what I, what I didn't do was, was see if you, you like being in that space. Mm. And, and your message back was like, it's really cool. Like, it's really cool because it means that I'm doing something that's stretching me, that's exciting me, and all the rest of it. Mm. So the first thing for me is around, like, making an assumption that fear is always a bad thing because it doesn't necessarily need to be so we might talk about it as fear but it might not really we might be saying it as fear but it might not be it might be like a, just a little bit of self-doubt or something like that so it can feel scary or fearful but it's it also can easily feel like exciting um so yeah that was the thing that was kind of coming up for me as you'd sent me that message I straight away was like oh I can help here and then and then took a step back and was like oh you don't need any help like you like this yeah. feeling yeah. yeah yeah that's a really good point and I think that what I've got to add on that is that for me I used to see sort of the fear of rejection because let, let's be honest here we're probably talking about making proposals coaching proposals and talking about money that sort of thing right that's I get, I'm assuming, you know, inviting people to conversations or five minute chats and, you know, whatever that looks like, right? So I think for me, it originally, it was kind of how do I stop this feeling? Like how do I avoid it? How can I change my mindset? How can I um, work my way around it? Right. And that never works. Because <laughs> yeah. I mean, I don't know about you, I, I'm yet to find anyone that doesn't experience that, that sensation. But for me, it was kind of changing my relationship with it. Mm -hmm. And it's it's kind of like you said, it's kind of like an indicator that something's about to happen, something's about to change. And it's really exciting for me because I know the closer I am to the rejection or closer I am to that feeling of rejection, the closer I am to that feeling of joy that comes almost yeah. alongside it, right? Because all that, so I remember when I started creating my first clients and, and people were paying me good sums of money, right? So that I sort of started to go into the high four feeling. That feeling of, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God, I'm scared, I'm scared, I'm scared. And then all of a sudden it was like, yeah, let's do it. Like, wow. <laughs> it's such a fine line um, between that fear of rejection and joy. And so many people, unfortunately, never put themselves in the position where they allow themselves to experience that, 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 mm -hmm. that joy. So it's not necessarily, I think the rejection thing, 
it's like a magnet to me now that fear and rejection like i said to you it's like a it pulls me in because i know i'm at the edges of this sort of belief of, that i can do something or you know, past experience that kind of stuff where something new is about to happen mm. and i love that man. i'm really in love with that and i look after my sort of myself in terms of i live in that space constantly all day every day because i think i just stress myself out but for the most part when it comes to coaching i'm more than happy to be in that space yeah i definitely um i definitely have like this we've talked about this where i have this compass and and it's it's like when something feels kind of exciting and kind of shit scary so it's like a balance like that's usually the direction that i want to be going in because if it's too comfortable it gets boring really easily and if it's too scary then i get into panic mode and overwhelm and i don't do anything with it so yeah. it's like finding that balance and that it's outside your comfort zone so there is that fear of rejection but not where it's going to give you such a catastrophic in your mind end result that it's going to put you off forever yeah um but i think one of the things that i did to switch the way i was thinking about it was i, re I truly did just learn more about service because I was hearing this all the time and it was, it was Steve Chandler that with a lot of his books and a lot of his um, teachings were around service and how, Oh, you're in, you're, you've got fear of rejection when you think it's personal and it's not <laughs> like it, it doesn't have to be personal. So if you step into service mode, and come from a place where it's like you've got your client at the heart of everything that you do or say or that that person who you're about to propose to or invite into a conversation when you're really in that space of what is going to serve them it automatically takes you out of the thought about how do i look what am i going to ask next it takes you away from that and it just i don't know it's, it probably does just take a little bit of um understanding i don't even, i was going to say practice but i don't feel it's practice i think it's just understanding of oh my mind has wandered to me again mm -hmm. and it's just catching it that that's all it's doing and bringing yourself back to my client in front of me the conversation in front of me the person in front of me and not make it like they're whatever they say if it's a no i don't like why does why am i going to attach energy to that no and make that no mean something more than it actually means it's just no that's it and um what i found really interesting this week is i've noticed how much i love having conversations now when i have like money objections so i've had a few renewal conversations this week with clients and i've had the the excuses around um i get this often around like oh i want to see if i can do it for myself um, I want I want some time to embed what we've learned and it's like sometimes that is really true and really relevant and sometimes it's like that feels perfect for what you need right now but there's other times when you're working with someone and you can see and you can hear everything that's coming at you is like there's so much fear there and there's fear to invest further because there's no certainty of results or you know it's like there's there's fear there so so I'm getting a no, but I'm getting some kind of bullshit answer as to why it's a no. Yeah. Like it's not the right time or, you know, so it's like, I love now really getting and exploring in those conversations. So I hear the no, but I don't in my head go, oh my God, and panic. I go, they go no. And I go, oh, tell me why. Like what's going on for you? Like I know you said this, like why is that? Why do you feel, what is it that's going to be different if you were to try and do this on your own? Like, what is it that you're wanting to get from that alone time? And, and that just opens up a whole new conversation. So if you're not stuck in fear of rejection mode, you're still in service mode. You're genuinely curious about why is it a no? Like, tell me more. I want to learn. I want to know. And, that, and what I found was that opened up. Like, we stayed on the call for another hour because there was so much there to coach her on. And what came out was, like, I am scared to invest more if there's no certainty and I've had a no at interview and I've had a no at another interview like back-to-back -back no's 
and I'm just feeling like it's all just too much right now. Mm. And it's like, oh my God, we, this is why I feel like we definitely need to continue because yeah. all of this is coming out. So, so I just say, don't be afraid of a no and don't be afraid to challenge the no in a really, really loving way. Yes, I love that because it's kind of almost putting yourself in a position where you can't be rejected because there's nothing to reject. It's just I'm here to serve you. And this conversation ends when it ends, when it goes where it goes. But let's let's talk. Let, let's and, I, and again, that comes back to what we talked about a couple of weeks ago with context. It's like, are you okay with us? Can we have permission when we talk about this to potentially coach you on the answer, coach you on the outcome to discuss it? Because it's really important that we look further into this together. Mm. you know because I like to know what the yes is as well it's like tell yes. me like, talk to me about what is this yes for you what does it mean to you tell me about you know, how it feels because I love it I love exploring that yeah. with clients because yeah. often I, I used to be like oh yeah let's go and then it's all right in the call let's get let's get paid let's get started and it's like well, actually let's slow things down a little bit and, and explore and yeah. I think there was a piece there a minute ago as well when you're talking about rejection it's like the, the coach or us as coaches tend to put ourselves in a position where it's like we're the ones that can be rejected but it works the other way as well you know it's because I'm, I'm not actively looking to reject people when I'm coaching them but I'm kind of looking for reasons as to, to why I should take them on yeah. you know I, I want to be really clear that there's somebody that excites me to work with that I really want to work with them and I really believe in what they're trying to do and create and change and I believe that they're going to do it so actually it works the other way as well it's like is this somebody I want to work with? Do yeah. I need to reject them for now? Do we need to sort of put this on hold for now or say no for now, you know? So yeah. I think it, it's very easy. And I was talking to, I think it was Joe. she's in our group about this. And it's very easy to get caught up in all of that. When really, you know, like you said, you put it way more eloquently than I can, even after six, seven glasses of wine. <laughs> it, it's shot, just, glasses, it? shot glasses shot glasses <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> you know it, it is just slowing it down it's enough judgment to really, free so. area sam it's judgment <laughs> free <laughs> Year's Eve, and i've only had Jeez. a tiny little like <laughs> <sip>. <laughs> sorry i interrupted <laughs> no not at all it, it reminds me actually on on a new year's eve we played the 100 minute marathon once have you ever done that no what is that so literally you get a shot glass and me and me and five mates that you get shot glass and you get beer cans of beer you, you don't want to play it with anything else and you do a shot a minute every minute for 100 minutes oh my you god think, oh, that, that's easy right that's no, no i'm not thinking that <laughs> it's like seven cans <laughs> so you think oh this is easy like an hour and 40 minutes wherever it is later you are hanging it's seven cans great oh, fun i haven't done great. it in years though <laughs> did anyone make it for the 100 minutes uh, oh yeah we made it we just didn't make it out afterwards <laughs> i'd buy alcohol free cans and not tell anyone <laughs> ah, I mean, we're getting the measure of you there so you're giving okay you're giving you <laughs> but uh yeah i think it's i used to see it i don't know i don't know about you but rich little talks <laughs> about this about being bold and about being brave and i think there's an element of that sometimes i think that's kind of how it shows up but i also think there's an element here of this is a really nice comfortable it can be a very beautiful conversation it can be really really enjoyable it doesn't have to be mm. so tense right and i think it's important to give yourself permission to know that it's okay if you to yeah. relax into the conversation you know and just go where it goes yeah um, because if you've got an attachment to outcome there is going to be that fear of or yeah. very likely to be that fear of rejection well that is exactly what i was you just triggered in me it was like oh i remember i had a fear of rejection more when there was an attachment to outcome but the attachment to outcome if i moved beyond that that was because i had this belief of oh i need this client instead of seeing beyond there like oh there's tons of other people that i can arrange conversations with or you know if i continue to serve this person in this moment who knows what might happen in the future, which would have put me in a more relaxed mindset. But because at the time it was like, I need this client and need them to say yes. In some way it was like, it validates me or it proves that I can do proposals or something else. Like I was making it mean more than I actually needed to mean. Mm -hmm. 
So I think that's probably why it felt like it had power over me for a while. And just the more the more I do it, the more I really can relax into it and really, really enjoy it. So I, I, now, I never thought I would say these words, but now it's like, bring on the money objections. Yeah. <laughs> I like yeah. them now. It's like it opens up usually a really gritty conversation with somebody. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. And, and it's, it's going, again, going back to what you said at the beginning, it's, it's along those same lines. It's like, you know what, it's okay to feel those feelings as well. <coughs> They're okay. Like it's, I don't know about you. I mean, I'm three years in and I, proposals wise, I mean, I've made hun, over a hundred easily. Hundreds, hundreds. I mean, I have so many conversations. <coughs> and there's always an element or there seems to be an element there like that feeling. But that's, again, that's a learning in itself that, you know, these, these old beliefs are going to run themselves in the background. It doesn't mean that it's true, right? Um, and we can show up and be present with feelings, no matter what they are. Yeah. Um, I think the other thing I was going to say is, it was, again, it was kind of coming back to something you said. It was, it, it, what I used to do is kind of book a couple of conversations in, right? And then it was like, right, shit. That's all, the, that's all the conversations I've got in over the next few months. I really need these to be clients. Mm -hmm. You know, whereas actually now it's kind of like instead of spending my time thinking about how I can do a good part of these clients, it's like, where can I get the next conversation from? Who can I serve today? Yeah. And, and if that's your if that's your default, if that is your daily practice of how, how can I serve people today? Who can I serve today? You just serve one person a day and you give them one insight a day. Your business will grow and you'll feel your practice. But if it's just kind of, well, I've got these two people in and, you know, well, I've just signed up a client. They paid me loads of money and I can relax for a bit. Fine. But just be aware that if, if that's the case, then you're going to at some point probably run into that problem. Yeah. Um, just keep serving. Yeah, I totally agree. And, and also, if you get a no, it doesn't have to be the end of that conversation either. No. You know, you can just say, you know what? I'd love to explore that more with you. I'd love to know what's behind that. Do you want to talk again? Like, I completely respect your decision, but I'm really curious. Like, if you're running out of time and you feel like there's more stuff there, don't be afraid to be like, oh, I'm really fascinated by why. Like, do you want to talk again? Let's do another half an hour or something. There's more yeah. here to discuss. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. <laughs> I'm trying to think. Are we really pretty good coaches, one I know. Yeah. <laughs> trying to think if there's anything else to share on fear of rejection because I feel like it's such a big topic. We could probably go on for hours, but it might be helpful just to do snippets. And and so for, for me, like my key my key learning about this is really just taking it away from me, taking it away from feeling personal, and just stepping into service mode, whatever that looks like. But, but, that would be my, my kind of my biggest tip or the thing that's probably served me the most to, to get over this. And, and it's not, it's not that the feeling goes away instantly. It doesn't like it does. It feels like now I'm really comfortable with rejection in my business. I don't know if I was to be rejected elsewhere, whether I would feel that comfortable, you know, like in a different part of my life, if I got a no, it would be interesting to see what feelings come up then. And if I suddenly go into story mode, um, so it's not like you're immune to feeling the fear, no. but it's that you, you see it for what it is, I suppose. And the more you do it, the less, the less power it has over you. Yeah, yeah exactly. And I think if I was to give just, you know, you've summed it up. And I think if I gave my one summary, it would be how close rejection and joy are as a pair, you know, and, and how exciting that can mm -hmm. feel. And it's just a solid reminder, you know, and, like I've said before, there's been some inv invites I've sent to people and I thought, this feels horribly scary. Like, I'm scared to press this send button because I'm shit scared of doing it. And they come back and say yes. And you're like, oh, my God, this opportunity is massive. Yeah. It's so cool, right? But if we don't not, if we don't give ourselves the opportunity, opportunity to be rejected, then we're never going to give ourselves the opportunity to experience not being rejected. Exactly. You know? Exactly. So Perfect. you should have just said that. Yeah. <laughs> We'll edit this out and we'll just do a two minute version. <laughs> no, we always get there in the end though, Sam. Of course we do. Um, is there any more you've got to say on that or do you want me to quickly cover off like what I yeah, do? Yeah, 
go for cover it off and then and then go for your five minute um, five minutes. chats yeah definitely so i mean there's not a huge amount there's not a huge amount to say in this and the reason why there's not a huge amount is because it really varies depending on who the person is that i'm reaching out to so i've had conversations with people where it has literally been a, a conversation to just connect with them mm -hmm. like I li i'm literally reaching out to say hey have you got five minutes like i, I have an idea Oh, I was thinking about you. Have you got five minutes? And then when we're on the call, I might share, or I might, first of all, I might just get curious. Like it's been ages since we spoke. What have you been up to? And share like what I'm up to, listen to them. And in that time, it might feel right. The conversation might naturally evolve if I start talking about my business and what I'm doing and the projects that I'm working on. Conversation might naturally evolve because people tend to ask like, oh, that sounds cool. Tell me more about that. Um, and if they don't, it might be that nothing happens as a result of that conversation. And it is just that I've touched base with someone who I've not spoken to for a while. And we talked before in a previous video about the not yet folder. So it's almost the same thing. It's like, oh, we've connected. But it didn't feel like there was anything there to offer them mm. at this moment in time. Like I've had people who have connected with them and they're like, oh, it's so cool. And we're traveling for three months. Yeah. And it's like, well, where you are, the time difference is never going to work for this. So there's nothing there. So it's like, oh, cool, where are you going? And I just get back into conversation with people. Um, I've had conversations where it's been really intentional. So I've called, I've called someone um, and, I've, and I've just said, look, I'm working on this project. So with my group program, I've reached out to people and I've said, I'm working on this, on this program. It's for women, like powerful women who don't believe in themselves. And what I see is that they're being held back by their belief systems, by their self-doubt. And I freaking love working with women in this space. Mm. Like from day one, this has always been an area that I've just loved doing and get really energized by. And so I was going through, who do I know that might benefit from this? And hey, whoever, you came into my mind. So I just wanted to reach out and see like, if this is something that you want to do. And it's totally okay if it's not a fit for you. But are you open to finding out a little bit more and I can share the details with you? And then I just go into that conversation and talk about like what the space would look like, who the people are, what the program's about, why I think that they would be awesome in the group. Um, and I get curious about them. Like, yeah. what, is it that, what is it that you're up to these days? Like, do you have beliefs that you feel like are holding you back? Does this sound like something it might that might be worthwhile for you? Um, so that so that happens, and then also you know if it's like if I've connected with someone and they're like, nah, it's not for me, then I might just say, cool, like that's just are you happy to stay in touch? And if there's ever anything that I can help with, like I want to throw my hat in the ring for that. Mm -hmm. And um, and also whilst I've got you, like do you know anyone that it might serve? Again, cool if you don't. But and then I just stop talking and see, you know, sometimes they go, oh, my God, yeah, like it's not right for me, but I definitely know someone. Let me connect you. Um, so that kind of tends to be what I do. But sometimes those five minutes turn into really long sessions and I'll just check in with them and be like, you know what? I'm conscious of time. Like we've done 20 minutes and I know I only asked for five. So I want to honor your time. Like, are you OK to continue? I have another 20 minutes mm. or or it's like, let's get some more time. I feel like there's more to talk about here. Let's get some more time. Are you comfortable with that? Um, but it's just a really like loving conversation. And often, because I work with my circles exercise all the time, I'm reaching out to people who I really freaking care about. Mm -hmm. and, and, and then when they start referring people to me, it's like those people come into my network and I really freaking care about them too. Yeah. So, yeah. I don't, I don't overcomplicate it. It's like a really simple, simple conversation. Yeah, I, I think, I don't think I've got anything to add to that. I think our, our experience with that are very similar. I think that the only thing I, I can add or, diff, or sort of put on that's slightly different is because I'm online, like all my stuff is online. Most of my work comes through group, through the groups that I'm in, right? Through my group, through my clients' groups. And what I'll tend to do, if someone says something in my group, or they've asked a question or 
I've seen they kind of come back to the same thing more than once. Uh, then I'll tend to just say, listen, sh- sh- if you've got some time for a conversation, like, let's let's have a chat. Mm. It's literally a chat. I, I make, I'm very careful that it's not coaching because I don't want to go, for me personally, I don't like going straight in there with the coaching, right? Like, let's coach. Sometimes that's relevant, very, very relevant, especially in the right context. But often with a conversation, it's like, that. do you know what? I don't know you, but I think from what you've said, I've got something I can offer you. So should we jump on the phone? Can I share that with you? And I've never had anyone say no. <laughs> like People are just like, wow, really? Really? Are you willing to, to actually have a conversation in this day and age? Oh, my God. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And and it's lovely. And, and quite often in my group, I've said, guys, I'm, I'm working at my desk today. I've got eight hours from this day, this time to this time. I'm doing admin, I'm doing my website, I'm doing whatever all day. Here's my phone number. And if anyone wants to give me a call about something, then call me. And I've had people call me. And it's really nice because then you can sort of, you're having these conversations and often people will be like, you know, I'd really love to spend some more time on this. I'd like to explore this a little bit more. And like you said, you kind of throw your hand and say, listen, this might be not right now, but stay in the group. If there's anything that you want to explore, talk about Let's Let's do that. Right? So they've always got a place to come back to. Yeah. And I think for me, the amount of times people have said no, no now, maybe especially with a coaching proposal, it's like no now, but they've come back later and said, actually, I felt really safe around you. Like I could yeah. explore and play big, but safely. Can we talk about it now? And it's, it's just giving people that chance to have somewhere to go. Yeah. I think not in terms of like self-help necessarily, but this person really gives a shit. Yeah, and that you just took words out of my mouth because if I was to sum you up, what I see is this guy who just genuinely cares about people mm-hmm. and and that is like you at your authentic kind of just self. Mm-hmm. And and the thing that I'm hearing is there genuinely isn't an attachment to an outcome here. There's no need for certainty. There's no scarcity coming. It's not like you're it's it doesn't feel like oh i'm going to post this because i want to get them onto a conversation so that i can convert them into a paying client Mm -hmm. it's there just seems this real like ease and fluidity and generosity about hey i have time and i think i have something that might help you want to just get into a conversation about that and it doesn't need to be any more and it might and it might not and that's it so really get that well thank you and obviously ditto well, i've said that to you a million times and i don't want to straight your ego too much it's uh, a <laughs> well, wide screen for the next call <laughs> <laughs> but uh I, I think there's a from the outsider's point of view it might look the same like this person's kind of creating conversations and trying to create clients and so on and so forth but there's a very subtle difference is that i think some people are trying to create money mm. and some yeah. people are trying to solve a problem yeah. And I think if we focus on solving problems, the money will look after itself. But if yeah. we try to make money, then often problems are elusive. Yeah. And we put ourselves in a position where we're just feeling rejection, which is really yeah. shit. Uh, yeah, that's so true. I was going to loop back around to rejection because I remember when I started reaching out, I had a few people, a couple of friends, like really good friends that were just so suspicious with their thinking. Mm-hmm. And you could sense like, they're re- like at the beginning of this call they're almost waiting for like what is this about mm-hmm. and it and it was they had this thought about oh she's going to try and sell me something and so you will get people like that like you will when you're reaching out and it's just don't like you don't need to put your energy there you just just keep going with it just keep going and what happens over time is either you just don't care anymore about those particular people so you just stop reaching out to them or they start to see if they know you and they're like in constant kind of um, communication or they see you often, over time, they're going to start to see, oh, yeah, like she's been serving for like three years now. Yeah. <laughs> and actually, maybe she wasn't trying to sell to me. Maybe, <laughs> yeah, maybe I've seen her genuinely just being in service yeah. and helping a lot of people. So it just takes time because other people, we live in this world where we know about service a lot of people don't a lot of people have very suspicious thinking and and it's just it's kind of i i don't see it as my job to change it but i see it as like just staying in the game long enough to help people shift that thought if they want to yeah 
Well, you use the word astonishment, don't you, around that? And yeah. I think that for me is, and actually sometimes those people can become, because there's something for me called the surprise sort of factor, right? Where you got someone who's that suspicious and then they have a call with you and then you're like, right, thanks very much, see you later. And then you put the phone down <laughs> and you're like, yeah. what just happened? Like, oh, yeah. man, someone actually just cared about me, not really. And that's- a- Maybe, or maybe for the next week, they're like, <laughs> They're going to email me and ask for money. <laughs> he's going to send me. A, he's going to send me an offer. I can feel it coming. <laughs> and then in like nine months, when you actually say, "Hey, do you maybe want to do something?" That I like, see, I knew it. <laughs> I fucking knew it. I knew you were a shark. <laughs> yeah, we, we don't tend to. We're not going to work with those people, but we might, you know. And and I think it's it doesn't matter, right? Because there's no there's no like you know joking aside, there's no attachment, so it's kind of. And, and, and actually, I think sometimes it's useful to change the word service because service sometimes can be a little bit what it was for me. So I'm just going to share it just in case mm. it's true for anyone else. The service can sometimes be a bit. Um, uh, what's the word I'm looking at? Subjective. Kind of if somebody's had some experience of service, true service, someone hasn't. I think someone coming into a coaching industry might be like, oh, what is service? So yeah. I guess other words are useful, too. Right? It doesn't matter. I mean, for me, love is another one unconditional yeah. love for somebody you know when you're in front of somebody what would unconditional love look like yeah you know? yeah so if it's just somebody that i already yeah. loved what would i talk to them about you know that's what's awesome. sorry i unconditionally love that comment oh good i unconditionally love that comment <laughs> that you love that comment <laughs> is this a good place to end yes it is we're not very good i don't know how long we've been on because i can't see the time but i feel we're probably over around now 10 minutes oh mate we have oh yeah we're pushing 20 i mean it's eight o'clock so we've gone <laughs> game we so as long as the bells hour. haven't gone yet <laughs> yeah, seriously yeah because you know there's a yeah, exactly. and then there's new year's eve <laughs> big, ben, big ben has chimed we are in trouble <laughs> okay oh. cool Happy, Happy New Year, Year everybody. everybody. We will see you in 2020. We will. Take care, guys. Lots of love. Bye.